happens all the time, but I use it to my advantage. If you'll notice the one, uh, the one I'm talking about, it just says Point Lobos with all the hard lights and shadows. That. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't see any picture that says Point Lobos. I just have three pictures. What is this Point Lobos? I don't, it, it doesn't say that. I've got these three pictures. Yep. No, no, no. It'll, it'll say it on the JPEG. It'll, you know, before you, um, before it downloaded, it'll say it on well, the JPEG. Could we just, Rob, can you just show us which one we're the working you with? You know, I'll do that. I'll do that. But Jane, Jane, if you look at the photos in the email, it's the third one. You know, one, the third two, probably one. got an apple, right? The third one is the one that's going to books. <laughs> that one. Yeah. yeah. The one is that with, right? Oh, hold on. I don't see you. That's it. Yeah. Great. That's the one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, see the one I have up on there now? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. That, that's Thank the main you. one I want to work from. Uh huh. But, well, as we're going to lay it in using, um, well, I think mostly this one because this one has what I call mostly local color. And that's the, the main color of, of things. There's not any harsh shadow, really. There's some shadow but not, not anything harsh and mm -hmm. any, not any harsh lights, which are blowing out all the highlights and, and making it kind of hard to look at. Um, um, even though uh, the shadows can be very descriptive, sometimes they don't give you many of the local colors and that, that can be hard to deal with. And uh, so sometimes I'll work from different photos when I'm doing a piece to just get a a, uh, let me get over here. Yeah. So now, like this one has different local colors. It's also overcast. It's not as orangey as the other one. So I just thought I'd include it to confuse you, you know, no. Because <laughs> um, I thought this one, this is another kind of thing. I'll be, I'll be out at the beach or e even in Eden Canyon, I mean, they're in the foothills and I get this all the time with that morning mist. And then suddenly right in the middle of my, right in the middle of my demo, I'm talking to everybody and it lifts and I go, oh boy, here we go. And then I get all these cast shadows and the painting totally changes. So, so we go from like something like this um, to something like, like that, which is, pretty harsh lights and shadows, but very colorful. So, and, and very descriptive. I love the shadows, how they can give a lot of form to things. So I really like it, but sometimes you, you miss the, uh, the local colors. So anyway. What is your remedy, what is your remedy to that in the outdoors? <laughs> well, uh, I usually start painting in the local colors and then as as the light comes out or if i can see it's going to come out i might even stop and wait for it sometimes um i'll i'll wait for it to come out and then i continue in and i start throwing in my shadows right over the local colors oh, good idea yeah that, that's what we're gonna do so um it's like make believe <laughs> okay so let's see. Uh, maybe mute everybody yeah, good idea. Yeah. Uh, cool. And you're recording. Yep, and record. Yeah, let me, thank you. Let me hop, I guess I gotta hop out of here. Yeah. Um, Stop sharing and I have to pin. Okay, I'm pinned and I have to mute. Okay. Now we're muted and pinned and let me hit the recording button here on the to the cloud, there we go. I always have to say record to the cloud because it says it right there on my thing. And if I don't say it, I have only myself to blame. <laughs> okay, so I'm just, let's just do the value study. And we have, I, I, I pretty, pretty much like this composition. Um, the hills in the background. And we get the greenery. 
I'm not sure I want to include all those houses. Although sometimes they can be kind of charming. Um, we've got this craggy, am I getting too far over? I don't think so, huh? Well, we've got that one there. I want to include this one, this little hillside in here. And then I guess this this cave right here is a big deal. Maybe another cave in here or something, I don't know. So I guess this comes down further. Okay. And we've got all that. And then we got another cave back here. And some of the foreground. And I didn't leave much area for foreground. I noticed in one of them, it doesn't have much foreground either. And I, I, I didn't mind that. Get some little pathways in here and such in the foreground. Get that little orange, little splash of orange right there. That's kind of nice. But see, I'm already thinking about color and I shouldn't be doing that. Let's just think about value right now. Um, I'll get out my trusty brush here and some. If you have black, that'd be fine. Any any color is fine with this. I'm just mainly doing a value study though. So let's get these mountains in the background. We have some cliffs here with some A little bit of lights hitting them. Okay. And I'll hit the sky there in a minute. Um, this gets pretty light up here. We do get a, a shadow on this side of this hill right up here in the foreground. And it casts it down. And over that neat little clay cave there. All of this is pretty bright. I'm not going to leave a light. I'm not going to leave a white or anything, but it's pretty bright. And we have a little shadow in there, and then all of this. all that you could even dry, dry brush this if you like it's not as important to get a really great texture when you're doing a value study put this shadow up here kind of comes all the way up I get a couple little cast shadows from some some of this brush up in here. Now lighten up my stroke there a little bit and pull in a little bit of that in the sky. It's a little lighter toward the bottom. Just hit that with my, just want that to be a little bit lighter. I 
I would say that the water's a bit darker than the sky is. Water's pretty dark. And they're not even lying about that color. It is so amazing. So they get, I would leave it kind of white along the shore where the, where the water crashes up against the shore. Is that kind of white? Oops. Yes. I don't know if it is me, but I, oh, I see you are adding. Okay. It, it looked like all the values were the same, uh, but now you're adding more. Yeah. Dark. Okay. Yeah. Coming around, hitting some dark, some dark in here. Let's hit these darkest darks. Maybe hit these down here. What's happening is you're getting a little reflection on the water too, right there. Which is very dark. And this sort of cast shadow on the water. And I might want to throw in some water in there first. That gets me, you know, three basic values of what are my lightest things, what are my medium tones, and then where are my darks. And that allows me to kind of make adjustments. Like, for instance, we do have darks in the background, but we don't want them this dark. So I might sample my little dark here. Okay, okay, something like that. Maybe little little dark things here on the shore and in the trees and everything, but I just don't want them competing with these darks. And if I had to, wow, it may be even that, that, that we're getting some shadows way back here. Tried a little bit light on me back there. All right, something like that. Just with a little, little bit more contrast. Maybe not so much on this hill back here because I want that recession of the values. See, that's too dark. Whoops. I was just pumping up something a little bit darker up in here. Okay. All right, good enough. All right, now, and then there's all kinds of little darks in there, which I don't think we need, really need to worry about too much. I'll just suggest a few little things in there, maybe a few little things up in here too, so we don't get too, too light in the shadow, which again, drag pretty light on me. All right. Maybe I might throw a little bit of a tone on this. Now, I, I don't want anything in here being as, as uh, let's see, as, I wouldn't want this to be the same value as the water. The water is a little bit darker. That's why these highlights really pop here. So I think I even need to go darker with that water. But I do want something over here. And then as it turns into just, I guess it's limestone or something, it, it gets quite a bit lighter. 
you know, in certain places on our coast, it gets so bright. The actual color of the dirt is just unbelievably light. Maybe a little darker with these shadows in here. There's a little cast shadow on the ground there. I mean, on the on the water, and you see this the blue, the light blue sky coming in there. That might be a. I think what we'll do is we'll probably lay that in in a like ultramarine blue, and then come over the sides like this. Hitting like some probably some Prussian blue around the outside. We'll get this really cool reflection in there. Oh boy, it'll be fun. So basically, we have our, you know, grouping all this stuff can be difficult because a lot of these values here are the same values that are back here, you know? So it can get that's that's why I'll lay them all in very similar and then I'll really come back and smack my darts up in the foreground and then I'll come back and hit my little darts in the background. It really helps. And then, you know, any sort of um, vegetation, of course, will get a lot stronger with the color up here in the foreground. I might add a little bit more foreground to that. How about we move on to some color? Oh, can you see the whole thing in there? Oh, I didn't bother even uh, zooming in on it, did I? I think that kind of works. That way you don't get too carried away with seeing the details. I, I'd rather do it this way. Okay, maybe in this one, I'm gonna add a little less, little less sky. in the background. Maybe we'll bring the shoreline to about there. <clears throat> and make this foreground part right here. Actually there. Oops. Still going over that like that. Less of this. And I'll bring Let's run that up to here. Let's, let's see where we end up with our little cave in there. Love this orange off to the side there. It's great. So that's probably a little bit high. <clears throat> Want to see that water. All right, something like that. Okay. A really nice little push here with a gray shadow behind it. Sometimes when I when I see like a, a bush, I'll just register it like this, like that. Just kind of like a shape like that. And that's the one little bush here in the foreground with a little bit of a kind of a bluish shadow down below it. All right. All right, we got all of this. Got that neat little cast shadow. All that's in shadow. You 
can draw lines around your shadows if, if that helps. If you don't have a problem, I, I usually just paint paint in my shadows, but. And you can get really clinical about the whole drawing. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Some. You know, I, I'm if I had a cobalt blue, I might use that in this guy, but I don't have a cobalt blue. I'm going to use ultramarine blue. And you know what? I think mine needs a little more sky than this. Maybe up there somewhere. I have a squarish composition. Now we just feed a little water into that. If you want to try sh shooting a little bit of Prussian in there, because it does green up a little bit. Seen a lot of blue, gray, green hills. Now I know they get much greener here in the foreground, but I'm talking about up where it meets the sky. So I would make um, mix the ultramarine and the Prussian together. I've been having good luck doing that lately. And then add yourself a little bit of um, yellow, like a, a lemon yellow to that. That's what I'm thinking. Let's see what we get here. Kind of gray, a little grayer than I thought it would be. Maybe I want to add a little bit more. It's pretty gray though. Remember, that'll give more life to your color in the foreground. So if you get too colorful with that background, be, be careful putting in really colorful backgrounds. It, it, it'll pull all the I mean, it'll pull all the excitement away from the foreground. Right, we get we get we get some orange up in those hills too, kind of orangish. Just make yourself up a little cad yellow, cad red, and add it to your batch. As you notice, it doesn't depart too much from these. Or I can zoom into this a little bit. <clears throat> I guess that's okay. Oh. There. So I'll throw that into my batch of color just just for color another color excuse. It definitely gets orange over on this side. Again, any little you know they get orange way back here too, but that's another quite a distance away from these foreground hills. So um, keep adding the blue to the color back here. And a little bit lighter. And there is a touch of orange in there, so go ahead and throw little touches of it in there. Now we've got this all these green trees up here in the foreground. Um, I'm going to use the same batch of color that I used for these background hills here, but I'm going to use, I'm going to throw myself a little bit of um, lemon yellow in with it. And the reason I use the lemon yellow, I could use cat, but I, I tend to use the lemon yellow where I want it to look like cooler colors. And I want them to feel a little further away. But the, there's, 
as long as you don't make it too much too saturated, you can put the CAD yellow. I, I would paint it over like a little cliffs, didn't I? A little bit. And for the water, um, whoops, wrong color, uh, Prussian blue. Wow, you could almost get it with a straight Prussian blue on this. Wow, let's try it over here. Wow, that is it. I hardly ever put straight Prussian blue, but this water is unbelievable. So I'm going to do it way back there, too. And I just leave a little white along the shore, the shore edge, like in there. We've got that little rock in there, too. I'm not going to bother with that at this point. Just looking for my big shots of color. And since it's on my brush, let's do the foreground. It gets a little greener up in the foreground. So I might throw a little bit of, um, I'd probably use a lemon yellow in it. Because the cad yellow, remember, you're using a green or blue. So the cad yellow has a little bit of red in it. And that might gray it. It might not. But I'm not going to really take the chance. And then we were talking about our ultramarine blue in here. So that might be interesting. I think I'll just throw this color right over all my. And where it gets shallower up here, I'm going to just add a little water up in here, and maybe a little bit more of that yellow. Up in there, just to. So. Let's see. I think I might come back here with a little bit of this. Right in there. Mix it right into that. And then while we're in the water mode, let's put a little bit of that ultramarine blue right there. I think I'll put it over the whole cast shadow thing. All the shadow. And then we'll come back and hit those darks around it and pow. Kerpow. I believe is the correct um okay. So let's see now. You know, now I'm going to refer back to, uh, let's see this. You know, I'm not seeing it now. Oof. I'm so locked into the other picture. I don't think it's going to be right to use these other ones for the local color. Sorry. <laughs> I do do that sometimes, though, just so you know. I think we better just stick to this one. I think it's going to cause too many problems. Um. Because you know why? Because the coloration of those photos just aren't close enough to this to matter all that much. But just so you know, I, I will, uh, when I'm out on the spot, I will, 
I will start laying in my painting, knowing perfectly well that the that the light's going to come out and change everything, and then I'll wait for it, and then I'll drop in all my shadows after I've used the overcast to give me local colors. Okay. Um, let's go around hitting in all these local colors first here in the foreground. And we've got a lot of beige on the hills. So I would just take, you know, red, yellow, and blue. Red, yellow, and blue. Which is basically like taking orange and adding a little bit of blue to it, right? Red and yellow make orange and then add a little bit of blue. So it's always red, yellow, and blue. But I'm trying to make this beige color up here. Maybe a little bit more orange in it. Yeah, like that. And I want it lighter than the background. I know we have these shadows in the background, which I didn't bother to put in, but. I'll do those later. You know, you can paint those right into the shadows too, because we'll take shadows right over it. A couple of those little guys in there. Here's all our little orange stuff. And we have this very light face of the rock, which is really interesting. A little bit of that in there. Come back over here. It's really bleached out. So I'm coming down the hillside there. And then a whole lot more in the foreground. A lot of beige and a couple of shots of green up here in the foreground. If you notice on the other one too, really hit a lot of yellow green. So I think some of this yellow green really comes out at different times of the year. So I would feel free to throw any of that in there as you see fit. Rob, when yes. you make the, I'm sorry to interrupt, but when you mix your colors, do you save them for the final painting or do you remix? Oh, I'm always remixing. I'm always, 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 always remixing the color. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, I'll save it, sure. Yeah, do you mean do I make a whole big batch of it so I have enough to do the whole painting? I, if I thought that far ahead, I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sometimes I do. I have had times where I, I, I'm just really clear in my thoughts <laughs> and I do that. But, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I'm just too impatient. I'd say, and the sad thing is that sometimes my, when I'm really impatient, that's my best paintings. Uh, I say that's sad because I, 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 make all this effort to do it the correct way and then I go out there and do it the correct way and I'm looking at it and going yeah it's pretty good yeah and then I but I don't get that feeling of yes I got it I know paintings like a oof. you're always chasing this uh this magic here's some magic let's make an orange cad red cad yellow I mean, I think this is what attracted me to this picture. Just as some, all that. Maybe dart yourself some in some red and yellow into that. Love all that. And that's a little dark. But, oh, well. That's why they made rags. And feel free to pepper that around if you like. Maybe some up in the foreground, who knows? 
and that definitely comes out into these uh, yellowy greens too. And cad yellow, cad red, maybe try some magenta in there too for a little bit different. For your greens, just throw just a touch of, um, what do you call that, color pressure in there. That's good enough. And of course I would pepper that around at, at will. I mean, that's that could be anywhere. We're definitely getting some serious yellow greens along. That might be a nice little thing. Let's, let's pop some yellow green along this edge. I like that in that other photo. Ooh, that really shocks the monkey right there, doesn't it? And maybe some up here. Along the other side, that pulls us up into the foreground. We could and come in with these these cast shadows here um, are very violet, but I'm seeing also ultramarine blue in some of these shadows. You know, back here, especially right in here, I'm getting some nice blue. Unfortunately, I painted my color right over it. I'll have to watch out for that. So, so I would mix up some uh, magenta, an ultramarine blue, and I'm going to throw that over this color right here, just right down into my water. If that's too violet for you just throw in a little bit more ultramarine blue i like to get a little bit crazy with my colors and then um a little bit around this around this cave in there and then all this hillside here just paint it right over that we'll do some dry brushing in here and get it all craggy looking so that you know that color we're getting in the foreground just an orchestration of red yellow and blue is what we're getting that's why it's so interesting It's what I refer to commonly as um, yummy. It's yummy. I see some cast shadows on the ground here. I want to you know, from these, maybe a couple more. And I think it really blew because, because the dirt is so bright. It wouldn't get that blue normally, but it'll get really blue on a, on a light colored thing. The lighter the color of dirt or whatever it is you're doing, like let's say a sidewalk. Sidewalk's actually pretty light, typically, and um, it'll oftentimes you get a tree casting a shadow and you'll get this blue and white almost. And I know there's a little beige in that ground, so if you're looking for pure accuracy, I would probably glaze a little beige in that area. And we can just kind of and then you know what, very lightly, oh, yeah, let's let's hit our darks first. I was going to hit some shadows back here first, but no, no, no. Any color you like for your darks up in the foreground, you could use ultramarine, violet, even Prussian blue, any dark you have. Give yourself a really nice kapow like that. You know, you need a you need a shocking dark color. Maybe even darker. And then at the base of this too. Well, that dark down there.
And it does get a little darker out here toward the edge. That's what gives you that. color in there. Then hit a little dark around this little window and really showcase. We'll get into that because that's really, I mean, I know all this other stuff's great, but it, I mean, I'm telling you, there's like 100,000 pictures of this cave right here online. <laughs> Everybody loves that cave. What does everybody love about caves? I don't know them. The little windows. People love, they love little entrances and exits of things. What is that all about? It's kind of like, what do we love about patterns so much? It's like innate in all of us. We, so I have some darks here. I'm gonna smack a couple of darks at the base of things. I have it on my brush. So I just, not everywhere, just, just a couple here and there. And so them around within things. Another nice little dark up in here. Something there. Not a whole lot of darks back here. Some of this yellow would be fun to get, wow. You know, since we're doing a quick little color rough, maybe I'll just throw something a bit on the uh, yellowy side. Now, when you glaze a yellow over all that, you're going to get something fairly neutral. Now, the thing is, is if I get this yellow here, now I got to make the rest of it darker. And it does look like it's a darker shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw myself in some, some of that yellow, too. Maybe a little bit in here, too. The shadows look like they could go darker. And then I think I'm going to go over with the ultramarine. Just for color, make this a little darker. A little darker, Rob. There we go. Around some of that good stuff in there. And we kind of lost my shadow over here, so I'm going to hit that a little harder. With the ultramarine. There we go. I need some contrast in there, knowing that that's going to dry lighter. It's watercolor. And I would leave these white. And that's what we'll do in the in the initial one. I mean, in, in the real one. And then we'll, you know, toward the end, we'll glaze in some little bit of golden color into those whites. Now we do have little bits of shadow back here. And I, I just want to notice a little bit. I just got that ultramarine color here. I diluted it a little bit. So it's not competitive with the value of this up here. So all our contrast is up in here in the foreground and the background is more of just a setting. We do get some little shadows down on the, on the edge. The rocky side here, I think I'll leave a lot more of that rocky side when we, when we go for the, uh, the end. And that'll just be in a minute here. I want to want to add a little bit of something golden to these lights. And you see, I don't want to get it too dark. That might be a little bit dark. Let's see what I can do here. Yeah. Just taking off the pure white. Some of those lights. Let that 
dry up and see. We can always walk those values down a little bit, but it's hard to get them lighter again. And then there's always weight. I really wish I could have got, man, when I put that on there, maybe the paper, but when I put that color on there, it was a lot stronger. It's got a lot of blue green in it too, doesn't it? All right, so there's the value study and the color study. Cool. We're ready to go. Let's do it. Put this up here. Oh, wow. Looks so much better when I look at it from far away. <laughs> I've got a little, a little stand I put my stuff up on. And now I'm got a pretty far away. All right. How about we first? Um, yeah, let's just first draw out. Let's draw out our thing here. It's a little more square than what I'm using here, so I think I'm just gonna. know take it out further than I'm actually I could just maybe sketch out lightly where I want my outside to be and then so hmm, I want this up higher I should draw darker, huh? You're gonna tell me that, right? Rob, would you draw darker? Okay, here I am. This is me drawing darker. I can feel you. <laughs> All right, something like that. Right there. And then maybe our little hills in the foreground start there. And they start coming down. And they come way down here. And then we have the shore, which we get this first rock thing stopping about there. And then we've got another shore in the background. It's way up here. And there's a whole bunch of them. They just they just kind of vanished back into space. So I, I usually just put a little like a little stop where one where one sort of stops and goes up a hill, and then you got another one. I mean, they're so close to each other. There's not very much space in between. But if you look at them, there's a little there's little steps back in space there. It just vanishes into nothing. We've got this sort of craggy hillside. What do you call that? A rock face? Sounds good to me. I don't want to include the houses. You can include the houses. I don't know why. It never, never appeals to me to put the houses in there. Unless there's just one really great house or something <laughs> i especially don't like the houses that, that 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 scream look at me you know there's some big giant gosh there's a couple of them over in like in newport or whatever they look like they don't even look like houses they look like uh like some business corporate headquarters or something right on the beach you just scratch your head going how did they get away with that where was the city council when someone started building that monstrosity? You know, there's one in the Arroyo too over here. 
I'm like wondering, how did they ever get the permit to draw, to put that brand new, it looks like a, it looks like a mini mall or something, like one of those strip malls. It has like that, uh, like Starbucks kind of feel to it with the, <laughs> don't get me started. Okay. Okay. And then we've got our little cave here. It's down about there. We get this other one overlapping it here in the foreground. So I included a lot more water. I could have put this up higher. Yes, I could. But why? I like the water. Make my opening a little, maybe a little larger than that one is. And then there's something up over here. Fun. Hillside there, and then you get this other little indentation here. And then we come up to the other area, we got their little a little cave in there. I'd say that shadow starts around here and kind of cast over there. That'll tell me to leave a little bit more so I can get a little bit of that blue shadow in there. And I'm giving myself plenty of room for all this great, beautiful, gorgeous, Probably dead ice, ice, ice plant or something. Whatever it is, it's gorgeous. I love it when we, you know, this time of year can be so great. Dead stuff is great to paint. And I, I love to paint uh, like our, our buckwheat when it's all red, like that ready, ready red. So there's my my main bush right there with a little shadow underneath it. Some other bushes, more bushes. And so forth. Maybe I'll try to give myself a little bit more water here in the foreground here so I can make a big deal out of that that beautiful reflection, both of these reflections. That's your job. You're the artist. You're the one that goes, oh, I wish I wish I could do that. If only this was that's your job. You get in there and make that the way you need to make it. Yeah, that'll give me a lot more. So my reflection will come off there like that. Get about that much reflection out of it. And then that cast shadow We'll go all the way over here with that. That'll be fun. And then here too, you get that, that dark shadow in there and you get all that reflection. And the re one of the reasons you don't get a, a really nice reflection out of this is because this is in light. You see, you only see this reflection in the shadow, see? 
you get a touch of it here, maybe a little bit, just like you get a little bit of it here, but the light is washing out that beautiful reflection in there. So. This painting is so natural. Everything about it, huh? Except for those houses. <laughs> Burn them down. No, I'm just joking. No, it is actually pretty nicely done over there. <clears throat> you need to come to Oregon, Rob. I know, really. Huh? <laughs> oh, I've been. I have seen your coast up there. I died when I saw that. I took so many pictures. This is a long time ago. Oh, well, I should. Right, right yeah, now, it's red and very smoky. It's awful. Is that right? Oh, oh we have was... horrible fires. Oh, that's true, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. Where do you live in Oregon? I live in Newport, but there's uh, about uh, 20 miles between us and the nearest fire, but there's fires all around us. Yeah. Oh, boy. I, I, uh, I spent many years in Eugene with the Oregon Bomb Festival. And yeah. Yeah, the Mackenzie River is burning. Blue yes. River. All that yes. area is just tragic. It is. It's horrible. And we get this a lot up here, unfortunately. You said the, uh, the uh, Bach Festival. Are you a musician? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. Well. I was in the Pasadena Symphony for 43 years. Oh, my gosh. What, what do you play? Viola. Oh, how beautiful. Wow. A nice instrument. And not only that, she ran the chamber music uh, at Idlewild. Art. Oh, wow. That is fantastic. Anyway. Um, proud to have you in here. I have to. Well, I'm retired now, so yeah. that's all right. I, um, I like to do a little picking and graining myself. On what? <laughs> My little guitar. Gitter. I just go off. It's a fun hobby. Yeah, it's fabulous. I mean, I don't, but uh, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, when I was in when I was in high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I, I was toying between music and writing and painting, and I even wanted to be a, a competitive runner. I was a big runner. Track. I didn't know what I wanted to do. <laughs> I was all over the place. And then I went through this this little spell of wanting to be a surgeon. <laughs> Whatever. Let's try the surgery stuff. Oh, okay. Okay. Cut up, Rob. What was that? How did you get that? You're such a cut up. I know. Uh huh. Surgeon, cut up. Never mind. Cut up. Oh, okay. I tried. You, you, you got kind of broken up there. I couldn't hear you too well. Oh. <laughs> you want to be a surgeon because you are a cut up. A cut up. <laughs> uh -huh. There you go. I need to get my little symbol here. How's that? Okay. Next one, everybody. Now, um, let's come in with some of that um, ultramarine blue. Really wash my brush here. A lot of gook in it. Now, what you can do here is just wet the paper. Oh, remember to mute. Let's see. Let's go up there. Can't see your mute thing. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just putting water down. And you could paint that right into your hills if you like. I mean, you want a nice soft edge. Totally up to you. I know we did a lot of that neat wet into wet last week. Ah, uh, this one's gonna go crazy on you if you go totally wet into wet. I mean, it really would go 
really would be nice, but oh, we could try something. <laughs> I'm sitting here convincing myself. I just don't want you all screaming at me at the end of the day. Why'd you do that, Rob? Okay. You see, and that'll gradate it right down into your hills. And it did overlap my hills a little bit. And that color gets quite a bit more saturated in the blue. You could, um, like I think, I think cobalt blue would be great. So Dan, you, your, your awesome cobalt blue would definitely work in that sky. Dan has uh, like Holbein cobalt, cobalt blue. And I think, I think he gave some to me once, but I think I went through it because I don't have it. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of Prussian in there. See that, just a little bit of green. The cobalt blue is less violet than the ultraviolet blue. I think I'll leave that like that. Now, the only problem is if we start hitting that color right into that, it's going to right up into the sky. And that might be good. Who knows? But right now, I got mine really wet. And so if, if I put my color of my mountains right over that, it, it might get me into trouble. <clears throat> so you know what I'm going to say, right? Let's get into trouble. <laughs> okay. And I've got my little color thing over there. I'm making my blue, green, gray, um, ultramarine blue, a little Prussian blue. And if you throw in a little touch of orange into that, remember the orange will green, orange will gray your green. The other thing you can do is uh, just make a green and throw a little red in it. See, it's, it's all different amounts, right? Because green is just blue and yellow, and then you throw some red in it. It's all red, yellow, and blue. All of it. Let's try that color. Right? Yeah, I'm seeing that color everywhere. And see, it's going to leak into the sky. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. Oh, well. You know, my, my, my thing about this is that's either going to work out for me or it's not. It's been my experience that, that when I just plow through a painting and I do it with confidence, it usually works out. I don't know why that is. There's kind of a, it's almost magical why that happens. Yeah, up in here, this is a little bit more a little more yellow in this green up in here. I'm going to do that and I'm just going to keep it rough along the edge of where my rock faces are. Like that. As that gets further away, this, this color um, grays out a little bit. I'm just going to throw in a little bit more yellow into that up here, especially right up in there. And then as we get toward the background, I'm adding a little bit more blue to this, keeping that a dry brush edge right along here so I get a nice little kind of raggedy edge rather than a sharp edge. And back here, it gets really kind of dull, duller and grayer back here. Because that's pretty far away. But well, we do get a nice little silhouette up against this background now.
I guess you quite a bit. Now, I've seen that orange ice plant going along these um, rock faces. I would shoot some orange back there right along some of the tops here and there, just like that. And we get quite a bit of shadow on these rocks. So I'm going to mix up uh, ultramarine blue, a little magenta, and then to create just a subtle touch of orange in that. So it doesn't compete with my the intensity I want in my colors of my shadows up here in the foreground. And I'm going to throw these down. You know, they're very craggy. So I'm going to throw them down in a very sort of dry brush way doing all this with the same brush. And if you notice my tip is kind of spread, that gives me the, um, the great dry brushing. Let me see some back here. And a lot of shadow on this, this hill back here. Notice how I butted that shadow right up against this rock face. This is the foreground rock face. And I took that shadow back here and I butted it up right up against it. That makes it pop, see? Tricky, right? Okay, and I'll do it again here. I'll leave that rock face light there. I'm not seeing it being real light, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And then I'm gonna really hit a nice little a little dark right up against the, the front of it. And they get kind of brighter back here. Again, see I surround that front of that rock face just to pop it a little bit. Some interesting things back there. I'm making my shadows a little bit lighter back there. I just dabbed it with my trusty rag. We'll probably come back and hit these guys a little bit darker too. Just smack them a little bit. See that edge doesn't bug me at all. I love seeing edges like that. Again, that's one of those edges that just screams watercolor. And watercolorists especially really love that. So that's if you're entering things into a watercolor show where people that really admire watercolor, I mean, don't you? When, when you see big, bold, brave marks like that, don't you love it? I, I, love, I love looking at that stuff. I'd rather look at stuff like that that's really tediously rendered things that are, we all know we could do if we wanted to spend 100,000 hours on the thing. Okay. You know, if you want to include some of those rocks out there, might be a good idea just to draw yourself. Uh, I didn't put them in, but uh, a couple of little dark. And you know, how about we just put them in? A couple of little dark rocks in there, so we. next to him. Something like that. Real flat on the bottom too. There's some off the coast over here. They're not, they're not as dark. 
But what we do is we surround them with some some of that white. And you could certainly put some out here. I just noticed there's a bunch of birds around here. Well, there's probably birds all along these rocks. That's pretty dark. I don't want that to be competitive with my darks up here, so I wouldn't lighten that up a little bit. Other. So I'm going to offset that with another little rocky friend over there. Things like that. Now, we do have that orange out in the water, huh? And I noticed in all of them, they get that thick seaweed out there. So I think the thing to do is probably lay in the water first and then throw the seaweed, the orange color of it right into it. But you certainly could paint it first and then paint the water around it. I, that might be a little tedious. I think the wet into wet edges would be better. So I'm gonna use Prussian blue. And lemon yellow. Hopefully I made up enough paint. Uh, the key here is just avoid out all the white along the shore edges like that. Mine's a little greener than the water there, but that's okay. I've, I've noticed some of the other things get, they, they're, the other photographs, but anytime the light's different, Need to thin that out a little bit. I've probably got enough on there to do the whole thing. So you know me, I just add water to the paint I already have on there. Just grab some off there, take it off, move it around. That thins it out. It's kind of yellowy up here too. I, I would probably go for the lemon yellow right now. I could try the cat yellow. Just get the little yellower up in here. And up here it gets quite, quite green. Same colors. I made that really dark. But I do like that color, gosh. I hate it. There's always the struggle between value and color. I get the color I want, I want and either my values are too light or they're too dark. But What do you do? You gotta do what you gotta do, right? <clears throat> oh, I think I'll include that that color down here and right into my sort of ultramarine color there, keeping it a little bit greener out here. Oops.
There's the ultramarine. <clears throat> Kick that right into my brush here, just so that. Whoops. That ultramarine in there. All right. And then I'm going to hit just straight ultramarine blue. And here. And lighter. That. Oh boy, that's going to be fun. I'll mix it right into there. That'll be a lot of fun. I'm thinking I want some of that ultramarine blue up here too. I might be wrong on that, but gotta do what I gotta do. Loving that color. That's when you know you're doing the right thing. Even if it doesn't look right. You can fly by the seat of your pants and you don't know what you're doing. Trust your gut when your gut says, I like that. That's when you have to leave it. I don't know if you can see it too. There is a little bit of a reflection on the water from these light things, a little bit, like in here. See it? Some of these light rocks. I'm just gonna pull that off a little bit like this. That's just a dry brush. Nothing on my brush. Like that, just a little bit. Like a little bit of this reflection there too. Because it has a white face on it. I'm saying it's there. Oh boy. It looks like a jewel. I'm gonna let this dry up before I cast that shadow over it and get these. <clears throat> Bob, could you indicate yes. what colors you used on the, the water? Was that Prussian blue? Prussian blue and a little bit of lemon yellow. And I think that's it. Oh, it's so beautiful. Well, you know, I, I never threw that orange in the water, did I? Gosh, I'm going to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah. That's all I used. But I really kept it pure. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I mean, I'm looking at it up on my... Um, up on my monitor, it, it is a little bit more saturated up on the monitor than it is what I'm looking at. I got this orange in the water over here. I'm gonna hit a little bit of that. Oh, it still is wet, good. I thought it was good. It's bleeding into the water next week. It's hard not to get carried away with that. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to the top of it just to make it a little lighter. I think a touch of cad yellow. Yeah. Come on. Cad yellow is a little bit, oh, that's really opaque. <laughs> Trying to make it opaque on the top there. Well. Maybe it is what it is right there. <clears throat> okay. Oh, leave that water alone. I forgot to take that water out there. Okay, let's make that beige. There's so much beige in the foreground. <clears throat> Red, yellow, and blue. Basically beige is just a, a dirty orange, really. So make orange and dirty it up with some blue. Cad red, cad yellow. 
Ultramarine blue will work. There's other ways you can make it too. I mean, can you make a beige out of um, magenta, lemon, and I'm going to try to do that. And then add a little bit of Prussian blue? Yes. That gave me a beige too, almost the same beige, which is kind of odd. Let's test this out. Maybe it's a little more orange than that. Wow, I thought it was too orange. I just don't want it competing with this orange. I want this orange to be striking. So I don't want to get too orange. See, that's a little too orange. So I'm gonna dilute that out. I just threw in something with a little bit more blue in it. That's all. A little touch of blue into that orange would do that. And just dry brush that in. Well, I wouldn't say I'm dry brushing. I'm just, I'm using kind of a, if you use the side of your brush, you see, you get those little random marks. Like you see up there, watch. If I do, if I do this, look. Oh, random. I love how that white limestone exposes itself right here on the on the face. I want to make sure I get plenty of that. There's my main little bush right there. And they get different too, they get a little bit yellower. Take them right off the page. And just scruff them in there. Of course, dry brushing is usually the best way like that just because it's your painting brush, right? I want those random edges. Definitely gets greener up in here too. I'm gonna just throw the, the beige right over it like that first, because they're just beige everywhere. And then I'm gonna scrub in some of that green. I'm seeing a lot of lemon yellow in that green. I'm sure cad yellow would work too. I'm going to throw it right up in there. Look at that. Right up in there. Try some cad yellow too. That's quite a bit more orange. Ooh, I got thick on me. I think I might leave that in there though. It's kind of nice. I can always dull it out if I need to. Just scrub, scrub, scrub. There's some red in there too, why not? I'm gonna go pure cad red. Crazy. A little shot of red up in there, never hurt. <clears throat> Am I too cropped in here? Let's see. Let me zoom out. There we go. I could certainly enjoy waking up every morning looking at that.
All right. I'm going to make a little cad red, cad yellow, and really get that in there. Just kerpow. Cad red and cad yellow right out of the tube. Pure water, nothing else. There's other stuff in there too. Some greens in there. I just used, I had a little orange on my brush, so I used uh, the, the orange that was on there already, and then Prussian blue and cat yellow in that. Now these do steal a little bit of this, but I think I like that. So. In other words, I kind of like to showcase that. So if I need to grade these up, I will, but I don't think I do. And I'm seeing some stuff up here too, why not? Lots of green up here. I got green on my brush. Why not? There's a lot of yellow up in that green too. And the dry brushing really, really works, see? Now I'm dry brushing. See, I'm dry brushing, but the wet stuff goes in there and you can, see you're getting a dual stroke. So that's wet into wet, but as I pull it out into the white stuff, I get the dry brush, see? So alone, it's just a dry brush like this. But when I put it into something wet, I get the wet and the wet and the dry brushing as it comes out into it, it looks, it looks, in my opinion, sublime. Love it. I want to include a little bit of that orange on the top here. Give it a little carrot top right there. And this might be too much, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. I made my top a little different than theirs, but. Like it could have poppies on it or something. If I don't like that too much, I can just include a little bit more green and just dull it down like that. Now what some artists do is they hit the local color on here first, which is that kind of peachy color of, of the rock. And then let that dry and then glaze in the shadow. And the other way to do it is to just paint in your shadow, let that dry and then glaze in that peachy color of the actual rock in the light. Um, over here, it gets, the, the rock face gets sort of golden. Um, you could go either way. So it doesn't really matter in watercolor. And I liked what I was getting in the in the little uh, our little rough. So what I'm going to do here is mix up some some violet out of magenta. Let me really clean my let me clean my palette here so I don't get a mess. Magenta and ultramarine blue. And later on, 
We'll glaze in a little bit of that yellow like I did in the, um, in the cup. It's a little color rough. Okay, here we go. Maybe a little more blue than that. It's darker than the background, so I want to really give myself a nice dark along this edge. Maybe darker. All right, something like that. I'm going to dry brush it right into my grass. My uh, brush here in the foreground. All right. Take it right back up in there. And think of these as little little shelves catching light as it comes down into the shadow. So I just think of it, boom, 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 boom. And look, every time you get some little vegetation there, you get a little bit of a cast shadow right under it like that. And you get a little light in that, all this. See, everyone, all these little pieces of vegetation will give you a little shadow under them like that. Because the light's coming this way. We get quite a shadow in there. For those of you, those of you that have my drawing class where I map everything out, you know, this is where it really comes in. Because where you're, you're drawing with the brush. So you're going across the face this way, and then you're going, beginning to go down the face, and that's where you get all of these little glimmers of light. And then boom, you're coming down the face here. So up, over, and then straight over here. You'll get little bits. And so it, it really helps to understand the form, that's all. So we, we do mapping out the form in there. And I think of it all the time. You see this real contrast I'm getting right here. Between the, I, in fact, I probably will have to hit that even darker. We'll let that dry up. Let's go for the other shadows. Shadows in here and over here. They're a little bit bluer. Let's see what we got here. Trying to keep that dry brush edge on the outside because it's a rock face. I want it to stay kind of kind of cracked up there. I got some in here too. Got some dark stuff. Now what happens is that the wet water hits it up at the base. That's why at the base of these rocks, they'll get a little darker. Looks like a little browner, actually. Maybe it'll hit brown at the base. Figure this one. I see a lot of yellowy golden reflected light inside some of these shadows too. They're really quite nice. And all this, all this goes in the shadow, it's way up into there. And I'm keeping a real rough edge over there, knowing all this is going to go in the shadow. I'm going to reload up and then cast my shadow, maybe a little bit more. 
little more color here. There we go, nice and strong. Cast that right over. I mean, maybe it's not that hard of a line here. I'm gonna break that line up a little bit so it looks a little bit more natural. Hard edge lines, you hardly ever get a really razor sharp edge in, in nature. I have a little bit more on my brush when I hit a little dark in there. I know that's not dark enough, but I'll hit a little something in there. All right. Leave that in there. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Hey, this is dry. And I have the color on my brush. Why not cast this shadow right across here like that? And then as it comes into here, I'm just gonna use my dry brush. I'm laying my brush down on the side a little bit like this. And then it gets really dark on the inside. I try to work like that. So if I have something on my brush and I can use it somewhere else, instead of just throwing it out, I'll try to use it. And I'm just using, what do you call it? Uh, Prussian blue in there. And that could go darker. That's another thing though. I'd like to make it darker at the same time. I love the color. So what do you do? You go with it. Pretty dark there. I think I'm gonna hit a, a little shot of dark right, right up against the rock face like that. Maybe that will allow me to keep some of that color. Wow, and it gets pretty dark out here. Wow. Give me kind of there. A couple of those little good guys. Yeah, that's giving me the shimmer I was looking for. And again, since I have it on my brush, why not hit a nice dark inside of here? Same colors. A little something in there. I want to get a little bit browner with some of these darks. So if you take cad red and add it to Prussian blue, you'll get a nice warm dark. I mean, it's almost black. But I, I wanted them a little redder down here at the base where it gets wet. And even the, the light side gets wet too. It's just lighter. My feeling is that this shadow, I, I included more water down here. So I'm, my feeling is that the shadow would actually create a bit of a, uh, a shadow reflection into the water right here. It's not in the photograph, so gotta make it up. And I have that dark on my brush, might as well hit it in, in there and it's not dark enough, but oh well. A little more Prussian blue in that. Yeah, 
And since I have a couple of little dark things on my brush, we do have a few little dark things happening in the shadow here. Little crags and things like that. They're not black or anything. They're not this dark. And while I'm thinking about it, the wet rock here in the light is still significantly darker than the rest of the rock. So I'm just going to get it kind of wet looking on the bottom by hitting a little bit of brown. Maybe a little more yellow in my brown. Those could be neat. And they do the same thing way back here on these rocks. I see some dark, but I won't make it this brown, of course. I'm thinking about taking uh, you know this this white face here and just adding a little bit of something warm to it. I'm taking uh, cad red, cad yellow, and a very little bit of blue. That's a little dark. I just want to warm up the rock. on the face of it, that's pretty dark. So I can just hit that with my rag, see? Just plop it on. And hit it with the rag. That kind of, you know, it makes it a little, more interesting because it has little lights and darks to it, really subtle. And then uh, you know, we could take a lot of that same color into our dirt here in the foreground. Oh, there's so much to do. Um, let's get that yellow. A little bit more of that, it's too dark. Easily enough to do the whole thing. And I'm gonna just stamp it. Just to take that edge of that pure white off. I can do it over here too. And that's actually pretty decent the way it is. Throw that little shadow down on the ground there. Right under them, and maybe some of those. Or a real so you can sneak your shadow in. Take it into your bushes too. On on the left sides. Remember the lights coming from the right side. So I'm hitting a little bit, little bits of bush stuff. A couple little darts in there. Just dry brushing those in. 
So if you have a little mass like this, the left side of it. And if you can see the bottom of it, you might want to tuck a little dark under there, but there's not a whole lot of areas where I see it in the bottom. Like for instance, maybe under there, I might hit a little dark like that. That was a lot of fun. I'm gonna throw some little shadows. Oh, it's supposed to be bluer. Okay. And let's see. You see my, my edge right here came out kind of round. And that happens a lot when you're painting big washes around things. What I can do is just take the background color and play with that edge. There we go. If you wanna get some more ins and outs to it. Ins and outs, right? We tend to make sort of unnatural edges until we until we get a little time to play with it. So I want to kind of round it all off. And that's how I would do it. If it makes if it starts making a line around everything, I just tap it with my my rag there. Remember earlier we were going to hit some of that yellow, some of that yellow into our hillside there. <laughs> Pull it right into there. And there's other colors in there. There's probably darker blues and violets. Some of those. But... It's a lot of fun. Those shadow would be reflected in there too. I'm just doing with the color I had on my brush over here. <laughs> I saw a little darker. Oh. You know, you just notice things after a while. So that one got too dry on me. So I'll just a little dark. There we go. That's probably what too. And that whole shadow could be darker. Anyway, you can play with the little, with the little, you know, all day long, all the little these little ins and outs of the rock. A lot of fun. Smack yourself with a couple little darks at the base of things. In terms of that, this does get a little darker as it gets into the dark. So it doesn't just go from shadow to dark. It goes, there's a little transition there. 
I'm making that like a little half tone within. Uh, and what else? A little color to the rock face here. So it's a little duller than the water. Right now it's the same value as my set in the water. So I want to take that off. And I'm just taking a very dull beige and just dragging it over the surface. And I'm watching out, I want to leave that white. Because look how white the water is. So leave the white. Just the white of the paper, I think is good. Looks like we could go over those shadows again. Some of those shadows like in here are a little bit darker, so. I might have been smarter to give that more of a dry brush edge along this edge. So it's not so razor sharp, but I'm not going to get too picky about it. I certainly could work with this this tree tops on here, but I, you know, that's one of those things where I'll leave it up to you whether you want to play with that or not. But if I were going to do that, I would do it like this: just just take a dry brush, and you're looking for that natural kind of edge. So you get all the little ins and outs, right? I like that. Little treetops and such. See, sometimes this really found edge on top of a really lost edge has a beautiful little duality to it. I love that stuff, so. So now I would make these ones much lighter back here. Just sort of, just touch them with your dry brush edge. Maybe could have gone a little bit bluer with that. Maybe I will. I use kind of a blue, like a gray on there. Yeah, I don't get a blue gray. There we go. And just work that down into the base. Um, get a little orange right there. And just work that right down into stuff. A little more green. And there are shadows all in here, so. I just take a blue green, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of a, maybe just ultramarine blue, let me try that. Yeah, and I'm just dry brushing them in, thinking of all these clumps, like I'm hitting them on their left side. Give yourself a lot of light though. It's really easy to put in too much shadow. Just little guys like that, keep them kind of random. I don't want any weight on the sage here. I 
now with just a dry brush, and I'm using uh, ultramarine blue, I can come in here and really shape my shadows and really kind of get them the way I want. Just a little bit of light hitting the top. You could really spend some time with that. It does get quite golden on the face of these. All kinds of little shadows in here. Sorry, I thought I'd turn that off. That must be somebody sending me a uh, painting, huh? <laughs> I thought I'd turn that off. There we go. Yeah, beautiful rock faces worth spending some time with. And I don't have tons of time. All these little bushes too. All these little things. And again, for, um, try to let your your bushes here follow the form of the land. So you see how the land goes this way comes in and kind of turns downward, down this way, and then it goes up and flattens out. They'll describe the land. Oh, that's when you really want to look at those California impressions. They're so good at that. Unbelievable. So see how it just goes down and over and down and over and down and over. Really fun to play with that stuff. And we get to the top of this. It does get kind of lost up in here. Could put a couple of little, you know, if I really wanted to separate this hill from the hill in the background, you know, the photo really kind of isn't doing it. I mean, it's okay. And I could really copy the photo or I could say, hey, you know what? I know if I shoot some saturation on the top of this like that, I should come forward. And I just used that or um, the uh, the orange made out of cad red and cad yellow. Why not? Just just to pull us up into the foreground. On the seconds, even grayer. Oh, I'm seeing a little bit of that orange in the shadows. Wow. Okay. where the shadows reflect into the water. 
just give it a little bit of that. Oh boy, that's fun. I was having a little success shooting a little bit of this yellowy orange into my shell. I said, well, let's shoot a little bit in the air. I'm seeing some in there. Because it's reflecting this into the shadow. That yellow is very opaque. <laughs> I'm not using gouache, I swear. Not that I have anything wrong, any problem with using gouache. I'm just. That particular color is really opaque. I make that a little darker, just to make it feel like it's more in shadow. Just use ultramarine blue in that. And I, just as a capper here, really quick. I'm going to use a little bit of yellowy orange in these lights again. Just to make that feel like sunlight. They really get quite, you got to zap them sometimes. It'll dry duller, which I'm not even sure I want. I think I like it a little really bright. You know, if I wanted to loosen up this edge back here, I'll show you how I do it. I'm always talking about it. I don't really do it very much. Um, just take water and put it on that razor sharp edge. Let's hope I don't blow it. And I'm just going to let that sit for a minute. I put maybe a little too much water on there. So I'm just going to stamp some of it off here. And then come back with a bristle brush. Oh, I hope this doesn't have anything on it. Oh, it does. A lucky. Well, then I tested it first. And if I wanted to just soften that edge a little bit, see, see, that's all. That's all I wanted. Just dulled that razor sharp edge a little bit. And I hope that does that doesn't ruin my little white on the edge, and it probably will. So what I can do is just tag that with a little white. Easy enough. Why don't I show you how I do that? I don't know, but you can do it while it's wet. It's still kind of wet. And here's a little bit, this ginormous brush right here, and I can get an edge as fine as I want with it. What I'm doing is I'm getting all the water out of it. Why? Because I want my white to go on really bright. And I just take it right out of the tube like that. Like that. And then I just get the shape, shape my brush the way I want it. And I can come back here and just maybe a little bit, maybe it needs a little bit of water in there. Like that. That's all I wanted. 
that dry brushing really helps. And you certainly could use this painting like up in here if you wanted to work with this edge a little bit. I mean, but so many uses for this. And I like to do it, this is usually the time I like to do it at the end. But I might, that, that would be a choice spot to use it. Um, if you wanted to throw a couple of little pieces of architecture up there, maybe. Um, some little highlights. If maybe you wanted to work, maybe you got a little too crazy with your shadow and you wanted to cut back into it like that. Look at that, just like that. You'd never even know you did it. The thing is, is that it won't, you can glaze over this after it dries and you won't kill the luminosity. So, what kind of white, is that a gouache? This is gouache and this is, uh, this one is actually permanent white. I like titanium white. I think all they had was permanent white when I got this. Thanks. Yeah. So really on the very, very right face, the right side of the face of these like that, I might touch a little white on there like that. Just right along this, right there. Because that's the part that's facing the light the most, right at the very edge. And you could just come back and tag a couple of those in there anywhere you like. Anywhere you see fit, it's a great way to get get some of that cragginess back into your piece if you if you lost some areas. Great way to throw in your little um, sea foam back in there like that, just like that. I'm telling you, it works. Good old brush. Look at this. Wet into wet, dry brushing, glazing, glazing, glazing all over the place. It's amazing. I'm just gonna wet this down and I'll stamp it later. Cause I don't wanna get it too wet like last time. Got away from me. Use my uh, Henry seal on here. Okay, I hear some uh, mail coming in. Let's see what we got. All right, we've already got the one question. Yes. Is there a question? Oh, okay. We've got, okay. Well, that's enough to get started. I know some of you like to work. And by the way, you know, um, uh, for some of you that, that don't like to sit through the whole crit, you don't have to sit through the whole crit. You might want to try getting your thing in earlier, but the thing is, is that it doesn't really matter. Um, you can you can leave early. It's it's really no offense to me or anything. And then and then I'll crit your piece right on here, um, and then uh, you'll have that on the recording, hopefully. I don't see why I wouldn't. So in the future, just remember, you don't have to sit through the whole crate if you don't want to. But you know, in my, you know, sometimes you can't make it through the whole crate. You've got other things to do, but um, you guys should be lighter. Um, if if you have to leave early, feel free to leave early. Okay. Let me 
can get a drink of water here. <clears throat> That was one colorful watercolor, geez. Okay. Let me, what is it? Oh, screen share. Wow, that's a beauty. Charlene? Oh yes, that's mine. That's a beauty. I oh. love your rocks in the foreground. Wow. Oh, All right, nice. let's, let's get it going like that. There we go. I wanted to do the water blower, but I had Prussian green in my ultramarine blue, so when I went to paint the water, so it kind of was greenish. Yeah, it helps to test it. Yeah. Yeah, that'll um what I do is when I, when I want a really pure color, I go, I, I am nuts about it. Okay, I really clean my brush, number one. And then I really use clean water. Um, and that's why I have all these, I mean, I use this thing full of water here. I don't know if you can see it, but I got a real dirty one, real saturated, less saturated, less saturated, and then almost clean. Uh, I use, thank you. Yeah, I use lots of, Really clean water, really clean the brush. Um, and then when you're mixing on the palette, really make sure your palette's nice and clean. And then and this is for really pure colors. You'll want to test it. I'll test it off to the side or if I have another piece of paper. This is why you, if you have a, um, a painting that you don't particularly like, uh, use the back of it and use it for scraps. Oh yes, I do do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lots of scraps. So, so, uh, yeah, I would say, you know, it's, it's pretty neutral painting, but besides that, I mean, it looks great. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Your background is, I mean, fantastic. Oh, I'm glad it's a nice way to handle it. I'm trying to get used to working on hot press paper. Oh, okay. This is only about the third painting I've done on hot press. Yeah. So I have to get more used to how the water gets absorbed, how the painting paint gets absorbed into the yeah the paper. It, it's a little slower because it resists absorbing. Yes. And that's why you get these little puddles like this. You know. The but that's the charm of it. The charm of it is the little puddles. I like it. Yeah, I do too. You have to slow down. So sometimes when I'm doing it, I'll do two at the same time, just because, well, one's, or maybe even three, I don't know. Depends on how fast I'm wanting to go. But yeah, I like the way you handled all of this. Oh, thank you so much for coming up. Now, one, one thing you could do is, is maybe, pop a little more saturation, you know, reds and oranges. And, you know, we talked about the one over here, like really red and orange. Now that'll, you know, on a painting like this, which is pretty neutral, you'll, you'll, um, I don't know, you heard me probably say this before, but I'll say it's easy to to gray a saturated painting, but it's harder to saturate a gray painting. So here we have a gray painting, and and it's not a it's it, it's definitely doable. Okay. But if you want to come back, maybe a little bit more opaque, or maybe with some stronger colors up into these foreground areas, you know, with some of the um, oranges. Sure. And then if you wanted to hit any green or something like that down in here, the emerald color. You, you could do a little bit of that. Okay. A bit of that action down into here, possibly. Um, I'm, always, so, I'm always thinking if I put it there, I've got to put some in the mountains. Uh, this color? No, the, like oh. if I put oranges and reds, oh. I'd have to maybe. Well, see, you already, in my opinion, you already have them back there. 
have enough, okay? Yeah, they're, they're just so, they're faded because they're so far away. So yeah, I mean, you, you, if you want to tag a couple up into the foreground, that'll really, that'll really separate your foreground from your background in, okay. in color. Because right now, value-wise, your values are looking great. I mean, no. All I'm trying to do is smack a couple um, saturated areas up in the foreground. Okay. You know, and a lot of painters work this way, by the way. They'll start it off all very neutral, and and then they'll come in and really pop their saturations last. Okay. Yeah. So that's about it. I mean, everything else is great. Your composition's great. I mean. You know, your big things are there. Oh, thank Only you. small things. Yeah. Now, if you notice your your line right here is kind of going downhill a little bit. I did notice that. So, yeah. if you want to, what you could do is just yeah, just just uh, make it straight. Not, I would make it straight all the way across. So, remember how they kind of step back? They're gonna. Oh yeah. Oh, my dog. <laughs> Yeah, that did kind of bother me, but I didn't know what to do with that. You got your woofies in there, huh? Yeah, well, I put myself on mute. Oh. Okay. But anyhow, thank you, Rob. Thank you. All right. Have a great one. Uh, let's see. Charlotte, let's see. Clear. Wow, now just the opposite. You went, you went, um, more set way saturated and if you wanted to gray some areas <laughs> well the reason, put, I, I, the, re, the reason i stopped yeah is because i didn't want to um get rid of the white of the paper and yeah. I, if i wanted to darken it then it might just mm. lose the difference between the um water and the rocks yeah yeah I just stopped. <laughs> so uh, these suggestions I'm making are just they're only only suggestions because I I really like what you're doing. I mean, it's a beautiful painting. Oh, uh, but I kind of love, you know, this type of composition is a little ag aggressive. Yeah, because of many elements in it. <laughs> yeah, it does. From sure. the fact that, you know, so anyway. But I just I didn't want to lose. If I started knocking down the white, then it would contrast with the. Yeah, yeah, uh, don't do that. And so what I'm saying, um, if you wanted to add some neutrals to this, if you were feeling things were too saturated, I could possibly create a few of these areas. My opinion is that it's just fine. But so I'll I'll, I'll give you um, suggestions. And then I'll give you my opinion. My opinion too is that maybe like you could add a couple more darks into this area. Oh yes. Oh, that would maybe would bring you in there and yeah. figure out what that is over there. I don't want a big slice going across, but I just yeah. uh, left it. Yeah. And you know, I, I love a background that's very nondescript because it's just there it's doing what it's it definitely looks like what it is and that's enough you know it doesn't need to uh have all kinds of definition in it. well most your definition is right into here and that's your main area of focal point most your contrast most your saturation is here hard edges maybe i'll uh, put yeah. some around that little uh yeah. that's about it i mean well, it's a thank nice you. looking painting. That's a really nice looking painting. Well, thank you. What you think? Paint by, by numbers. Yeah. Paint by Rob's. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm even thinking maybe, you know, they did have that little dark along the edge there. That might be something. I wanted awesome. to separate that from the rest of the painting, and I just didn't want to go any darker. Yeah. So I just All left. Right. Yeah. yeah, I know that that's one of those areas where if you like the color, Ugh. I, by the way, I like this little hidden area. That's pretty interesting. I like that. Yeah, that was that last thing he did, I think. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Thank you very much. It was great. Okay. Your time is so special to us. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that, that means a lot to me. Thanks. Okay. Um, let's move on. Okay.
We've got Vindy. Clear all drawings. Okay. Let's see. Another woofy. <laughs> Sorry. A bigger woofy though. <laughs> Well, she's really not that much bigger. She just thinks she's big. Oh. It's the same one you've met before, Polly. Oh, okay. So, so she she just uh, walks tall and carries a big bark. That's exactly. <laughs> All right. So this is the idea to keeping it lighter and less descript back here, with less saturation. And more up in here into the foreground. That works for me. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. It, it, right in the middle of every painting, though, I go, oh, my God, I've really botched it. And then it uh -huh. somehow comes together. So. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like, oh, oh my gosh. God, horrible. <laughs> I know. that there, it's. I, I try to explain that to people, but it, unless you paint, and especially watercolor, but unless you paint to begin with, you don't know. I mean, it, it's hard to explain to people about the. It's really kind of stressful, actually. But it, <laughs> but the reward. That's where the reward comes from. Right. When you bring it to the edge like that, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, I don't know whether it's going to work or not. I don't know." And then, and then you pull it off somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Way it, it, it was. Yeah. It's not exactly what I wanted, but it sure is nice. And I wish the blues were bluer, but um, that it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some um, bluer, greener colors, possibly. Mm -hmm. I don't have the right ones, but. Um, no, of course, yeah. You, it, it, it's nice the way it is. It's, it's definitely an unsaturated painting. Uh -huh. And. <clears throat> You, you, if you wanted to, you could fight for any sort of saturation. You're like, you know, a lot of people like unsaturated things. You know, not everything has to be crazy saturated, but uh, uh, especially on the East Coast, I remember one of my teachers said, you know, you, you should, because I was doing very, very unsaturated paintings when I was at Art Center. Uh -huh. uh, it, even though I really liked to, I really liked to do the really saturated paintings. Our Art Center, kind of got me off on this very subtle, subtle color thing. And uh, one of my teachers said, you should move to the East Coast. They really love those paintings over there. <laughs> and really, I don't know. So anyway, um, yeah, basically your composition's there. And there you are with your white. Yeah, yeah. Your white squiggly's there. This one called for it. Yeah. Yeah, down in, yeah, it, it's good to use on these rock faces, huh? Yeah, and I used it a little on the coastline, too, to kind of uh, yeah. give me back my edge where I'd lost it. Right. Um, yeah, I'll, and I popped a little saturation along this edge here just to separate this from that. Right. Uh -huh. So, and, uh, and it, it wasn't there. So oftentimes I'll come back with something a little bit, you know, a little, a little bit, just to separate this, this stuff from that. Right. right. I, I tried to do that a little bit, but yeah. I could have kept going with it, I think. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, this is, this is going nice. Yep. Yeah. I like that part a yeah, lot. That came out really great. Okay, then uh, see how this kind of whoosh, uh -huh. usually what I'll do is, you know, maybe something like that in the background or. Ah, uh, okay. Maybe, maybe, you know, just, just, I don't, it didn't really, it doesn't really bug me, but that's, that's enough. If, if it bugs you, I might slip in a little something back there. Just, okay. just a little counterbalance. That's all. Okay. That's good. That's idea. it. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much. Uh -huh. Bye -bye. All right, everybody. Uh, let's see. By the way, I I I, I didn't tell you that, that. I think you guys already know this or not, but this is the last class of this term, and next term we start the next one. So.
Here's Francis. I forgot to let you guys know about that. Um, even though I have gotten uh, a lot of uh, installments for next term, I appreciate that. Okay. Here we are, Francis. Uh, yes. Hello. Oh, quick, quick about your class. Will, yeah. will the, uh, the link be the same as this class, or will you send us a new link? So, Everything's the same. I'll send out the new one. I, I just haven't got enough people registered in it yet. I will send out the new one, though. Great. Thank I, you. I should probably do that now. Yeah, I'll do that uh, today oh, or tomorrow. Whenever. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Let's see. Now I might for this. I like how you spread these apart, by the way. I was wondering what's going on there. Oh, yeah. This feels like a little a little rift or something. I don't know what you call that. I love how that dumps into this, so that's interesting. <clears throat> And I could see, you know, if you like, the water is especially green. So I could see, you know, like a blue green in there, maybe something like that. Yeah, I, I yeah. made a mistake there on that. So that's okay. I kind of like it. Um, and then I might actually dull this out a little bit. Yeah. Because it's almost a saturated disease. Yeah. So, let's see what else? Right now, you know, there is a top side to this, this one on the right, and then a shadow side to it. I mean, a, you know, a top side and, and this other side. So, I can see really kind of coming across this left side. Um, with blues and violets in the shadows, really giving it quite a side to it. Maybe some of these two, a little, little bit harder, a little bit darker in those shadows. Okay. You gotta get kind of aggressive with them, you know? I know the watercolor dries so light. If you look, I mean, I'll put it on there really quite aggressive and then it still dries too light. So, and this might be an area where you can even throw in some shadow. You know, like if this is in shadow, then it'll reflect in a little bit of a shadow too. So that'd be kind of fun, if you like. So sometimes when I throw a batch on there like that, I'll come back in with a little bit of shading in areas, like where, where possibly we cast a little bit of a shadow down onto the rock. Small things, I know, but they're, I think you want it darker in here too. A little darker. Okay. And, and in those darks, I wouldn't mind using like a, a strong color too, like maybe something, since we have green down here, something darker, magenta or something in there. And your, I don't really have any problem with your background at all. I don't really have any problem with this painting. It's just, uh, it's a little gray and needs a little more shading. Uh -huh. And I would desaturate that so it doesn't, you'll see when you when you desaturate this, it'll make this come forward more. It's a small okay. move, but you would believe it is easy. And if you want to take a little white along this edge too. Whoops, a little white there, you know? I can help. Like, that looks pretty good. That looks good. I know that water, huh? It's hard to get that really strong color in it. Yeah. At this point, I would leave it like it is. Because if you, oh, I mean, you, well, actually, you know, it depends on you. If you want to change it, change it. Let's see. Because some strong blues and greens in it could really help. Now, if you really, if you do choose to do that, then up here, 
really hit yourself some yellow in that water. Oh, like how about some, you know, really choose to smack it up in the foreground. If you choose to get more saturated with that, then get more saturated with this. Okay. That's about it. All righty. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Francis. All right. Yep. Okay, let's see. Uh, take this all off here. Francis. <clears throat> Louisa, okay. I don't know if I can get into this. Oh, sorry, I could have sent it a bigger size, huh? Oh, I got it, I got it. There we go. Okay, that's good. For some reason, I see your screen share very small. I don't know why. You know, it's not full view, but in any case. Oh, okay. What kind of computer do you have? No, it's okay. I, I just went full full screen, so it, it was on my side. Mm. You can make it larger. Go up to where it says View Options up at the top, and you can make it say 100% original size. And yeah. It should make the screen share a little bit bigger. Thank you. I just on, try it. I just did, and it works like a charm. Thank you. <laughs> well, oh, I don't see where it says view option, so. You have to uh, move your uh, pointer a little bit and it will appear at the top, at the very top of the screen. You know, you have recording on the left, you go to your right, and it says view options at the very, very top. Hmm. Well, I'll play with that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. Okay. Yeah, so you, you kept the background more vague. And you know, I like these backgrounds that are like this, really vague. They don't need to be really defined. Now this, now some of these colors right here in your background are beginning to compete with, you know, some of these foreground colors. <clears throat> Yeah. So two ways you can deal with that. Um, you could gray this out, which would be easy. Just a quick little blue gray kind of kind of glaze here. Mm -hmm. um, blue, maybe here. You know, just so this is way too dark, but just kind of a blue gray glaze. Something like this that you have right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that would that would take care of that. The other thing. The other thing I might do is pump up some of these guys in the foreground and really just kind of hit those a little harder. See how that jumps forward? Yeah. And here's a little, the little trick I did on the other one is get a little bit of that right along here. Uh -huh. And that really pops us forward. Yes, yes, yes. I see it. Right. And then keep your darks here in the foreground too. So you really, so it really pops forward. Now, as you uh, put this glaze along the background, I would lighten up these two darks back here because they're almost as dark as these darks are in the foreground. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, the idea is to keep it more in, in this range and, um, <clears throat> and then they'll recede. Keep, keep your nice darks way up here in the foreground and they come forward. And that, that's what gets you a little bit of the recession in your piece. Thank okay. Um, yeah, I had a problem with that. Which what? With what? I mean the the little cave and the rock around the cave and this. Yeah, and the shape oh. of the overall rock, you know. Well, just remember, you can always we 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 have that. You can add some shadow here if you like, and then. If you if you brought your shadow off too much, you can always come into it with white. But it doesn't look like you brought the shadow out too much. Um, it looks like maybe your the inside part of your cave is a little narrow, but that certainly could be like that. I mean, they're like that. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Anyone you know, can help. Um, let's see now. Can you see how we're 
we're kind of our perspective is more like that. And what we're what we're going for is something a little bit more like it's these switchbacks that'll give you this. Yeah. A little bit of a top to that. So I think if you just play with some of these shadows, if you notice, I, I zigzagged a few. And you got them in there. You got them in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe a couple of little darker little shadows flattening out the top here, like. I'm trying to get rid of this this idea of these kind of going pointing down this way. Um, yeah, a couple more shadows on the on the top, just flattening out. Okay. And this, I think it's also this this uh, this contour is what's doing it. So if you if you kind of cut back in with some of your water shape into that, give it a couple of little ins and outs like that. Okay. Uh huh. That should make it feel more like a, let me try this again. Yeah, I can see now looking at yours versus mine. I can see what's, yeah. So that'll just flatten out your top. We're, we're just trying to flatten that, flatten that out. Mm -hmm. It's a perspective thing. It's, yeah. you know, one thing I notice uh, where anywhere where water meets land or rock you want to think of it gets really flat now i'm not, I'm not talking about this anymore okay because there, there's that kind of perspective that's on the top of that and that's just uh i call it the lay of the land you want it to you really want to push these zigzags in it whereas on the bottom here this one you really want to push the flats really keeping it flat See how it almost feels like it's going uphill there? Yeah. And then, so just keep it a little bit on the flat side here. We'll just take some of that green and flatten out the bottom here. Then you have another wrap face that comes out. Flatten that out. Flatten that out. Uh huh. Yeah. And it'll keep that, you know, a little bit on the on the flatter side, I guess. <laughs> They're small moves. But right. they they really help. They're, they're perspective moves. I do it in here too with the dark. Really, uh, really kind of come in here and hit some of that. And I go around the rock face, and then I come in around the rock face, and and so on. Great, thank you. Okay, yeah, okay. and I might pump up a couple. Of these pieces of saturation over here up and up into the foreground too. Just just for the sake of um, uh, perspective, at atmospheric perspective. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Clear. Clear. Uh, I mess up with the meeting. I'll be back soon.